Hey everyone and welcome to Backseat Sports. I'm Josh and that is Caleb and I mean there's a lot to talk about today. Obviously a tough close loss for Nebraska on Saturday with a loss to Michigan and so today we'll be talking about that breaking that down and then talking about a pivotal crucial game against Minnesota this weekend given our predictions the X factors and a whole lot more for that game so hope you guys are buckled in and ready to go because it's going to be a good one to say the least Caleb how you doing man I'm crushed I'm <laughs> crushed Josh uh yeah what a great atmosphere in Memorial Stadium on Saturday night, another oh, night game. And it was just so much fun. It was, uh, I mean, it was loud. Uh, everybody was super excited too that I was sitting next to. Obviously, it was a roller coaster game, especially in the second half. You know, it's one of those games where you're high fiving everybody around you in the seats. Uh, you're getting to know each other. You're talking. Everybody's excited. Everybody's screaming, being super loud. Um, and just to come up short yet again, 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 Insane, again. Insane, man. It just like the heartbreak just continues. Um, this one feels like very much more so we shot ourselves in the foot than anything. Uh, but nothing man, new. When we when Deontay Williams had the pick and then we scored the oh, touchdown yeah, the next man. play. I mean that's as loud as Memorial Stadium has been in a in a long time. Uh, in my personal oh, experience. Oh for sure for sure. And uh, the lid was definitely it was just everybody was so excited uh, that especially that interception to to come back to what you thought was going to be a win, and then right. going to the fourth quarter, the oh, light show. No. Everybody knew it was coming. Uh, man, just oh, to come up empty yet again. Just I know, man. Pain. It's, cr pain. It, it's terrible. Obviously, the line going into the game was like three and a half, and so for that to end up being right in that, that three-point line, which, you know, I, mean, mm. you know, I did I did say it was going to be a three-point game. You know, not, 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 not tooting any horns around here. But uh, it, it ended up being a good time. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I mean, yeah, obviously, like you said, the, the hype there at the end of the third quarter with like the touchdown, then the pick and the points, and then the third quarter, and then going into the fourth. Yeah, we we, we, can, we the get lead. two point conversion. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. It was, yeah, we I were really up three. thought we had a. That was when I started believing. I'm like, well, we are in trouble <laughs> here. Obviously, we're going to break this thing down. Then we'll, then we'll go through some of the takeaways, offensive defense, then go into the Michigan game and uh, talk about the little preview there, and then the X factors, and then a full on prediction. So we got a long video ahead of us, but it's going to be a good one for sure. Offensively, thoughts on this game. Obviously, now we are... Frost has now lost 16 one-score games. How in the world does this keep happening? It's insane. It's the same thing over and over and over again. And <sighs> shocker, it came down to turnovers. And uh, let's start with the elephant in the room. Adrian Martinez, as many good plays as he makes, he's always... He's always the the the... the the reason we lose like it, that's what it seems like he's the reason why we're we have a chance and then he's the reason why we lose it's like and it's it's happened over and over again thoughts yeah uh you know you live by adrian martinez it feels <laughs> like you die by adrian martinez uh you know him making the excuse that he thought the play was dead replaying that that's kind of kind of some horse crap honestly <laughs> he was still churning his legs and you just see in the replay <laughs> His his arms get away from his body, you know. You, yeah, the every football you teach, play. You know, you teach three points of contact. You know, one of those arms get pulled away. It's only two. It's just you know inside his elbow and his hand, and it's super easy to pop out there. And good on the Michigan defender for realizing that. Also painful if you re replay that. I think his Vokalek actually sheds a block. You know, he he's the lead blocker there. They pull him, and on that left side. He had a ton of green grass if he just follows vocal Definitely. out there. And that's probably 50, 60, maybe even a touchdown. Yeah. Uh, so that makes that play even more heartbreaking uh, on the on the replay on that watch back there. So, right. again, it's just something you can't do. We have a chance to win. You got three minutes, got timeouts, uh, you know, again, and momentum. Uh, it's tough because, he, again, he he's oh, an electric player. Oh, and he made player. some unbelievable plays he, in the game, yeah, too. And we were like, all right, he he's hitting shots downfield. Player. He was he was throwing some nice he was weaving some in there. I mean, there was some impressive, but impressive in the clutch, plays from Adrian. Exactly. And this but is what in we've the seen clutch, over and over when again. It's to win the game when when the chips are down, or even when the chips are up, and we have a chance to go win the game. Yeah. It just it, it he turns it over. It's a pick. It's a fumble. The offense and stalls. It, yeah, those things the happen. The offense stalls, yeah. and and when we lose the game in overtime, or this is a four year starter. This isn't a freshman. This is a dude that's played for four years. You have to win that one. Yeah. It's at home. It's at a night game. The crowd is electric. The defense 
Made some critical well, at stops the least there. You can't be the one that turns the ball over. Coming out hot today. I just I, that's so frustrating. Oh, I mean, it it's is. it's it beyond is. frustrating. Uh, you know how many times I've listened to him in the <laughs> post game press conference, having to explain a fumble that lost us the game or a pick that lost us the game. Oh, for sure. He's like, oh, I have to do better. No, no, duh. Yeah, I've seen this too many times. It's just. Uh, he he's electrifying, but at the same time, he's infuriating. No, for sure, definitely. And like 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 we said, I mean, it's just straightforward as that. He wins us the games, and he can be the reason why we haven't even have a chance. And then he he does that in, in the biggest moment sometimes, and it's killer. I mean, you I know, think, even that I pick in that first half it. wasn't wasn't great either. Where he's a little bit late on the throw. He, yeah, again, we had you got, him on the you got scene. To throw before the break. Get that, yeah. get that ball out right when he's breaking. It's and said it was a, it was a half second late, and that was the difference in the play. Where like a veteran safety you know, saw the mistake that the safety had made and then made up for it, broke yeah. the, broke on the ball and Adrian was a half second late and throws the pick. So it's like, it's just those small things where it's like, okay, a screen pass doesn't get out right on time where if he if that gets out a quarter second earlier, uh, yeah, he might have the chance to turn high. up field. Like, you know, it's just those small things where it's like, he makes the electrifying highlight plays where Again, it feels he like he has a he great just, game and yeah. then there's the small mistakes that end and up And he does being so good to, to escape difference. pressure so many times. You know, oh, that's the thing. Game. He was Look rushed at, so many times and so many made times. so many does a great, great efforts to get get out of the pocket, make some sort of play and if out of it. He just doesn't turn the ball over. It's a great game for him. It's insane, it's, man. It, it's crazy how it keeps happening, and I'm sure we'll have yeah. more conversation about that heading I, into the a road yeah, game against Minnesota. You said it best oh, to wrap it up. Yeah, I think you said it best with uh, Frost said his first year. You know, this team yes. will go as far as Adrian Martinez can take him, and that's been true for four years. And as far as he can yeah. take us sometimes, it's and that was going enough. into the second season where Frost yeah. said that. So he was yeah. like, you know, the hype around this team. And he literally quite literally said before the year in a press conference, we will go as far as Adrian takes us. And that's been pretty, pretty on the money now and for been, three seasons. And he can take us this close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been pain. So we'll see what happens. Obviously, we'll be talking a lot more about Adrian here heading into the the Minnesota game for sure. So um, other takeaways from this offense, obviously uh, a big unfortunate negative here was Prohaska yeah. ended up going down in the game. And, w you know, we had talked about the potential changes uh, coming yeah, for the so offensive exciting. line going into the year. And last week he was such a big change plus and a yeah. big plus with him uh, just looking great. And the offensive line making the changes with uh, Ben Hart getting benched and then Corcoran getting moved to right yeah. tackle and all those changes. And uh, then we had to bring Ben Hart back in after the injury. And Ben Hart, to, be, to his credit, played well. It played very solid, at least. Well, he didn't have any false time. starts, which is a positive. <laughs> That's true. No false starts. That's true. So uh, that was an unfortunate part of the game season long where we were so much uh, positivity for the offensive line after last week. And then for that to happen early in this game was a little bit frustrating. And now we have to go back to Ben Hart again, which, you know, again, he played better. But can he keep that up? That's going to be a question mark we'll have to talk about later as well. And Turner Cochran also, or he didn't have a great game again. Graded out a zero in the passing protection. Uh, Tough you know, stuff just, there. Just a rough year for him. Again, he just he's way too much of a door <laughs> in the pass game. Yeah. Again, he can be he can be okay in the run game for sure. And we even had some some good running moments. Uh, you know, you think back to the, the Ramir Johnson big run that he had in the second half. Uh, where he played a, a good role in that, definitely, definitely. But but in the same light, you know, you gotta be able, you gotta be able to do both, and uh, just just qu couldn't quite there. So, yeah, no, I mean, I agree. I, it's just a lot of those things where it's like you it, with the offense, you wanted to see a little bit more. Like either we punch that thing in at the goal line, but then we decide not to go. We we end up going for it, not getting out on fourth down again. Tough call there with Frost, where it's like I feel like the. The smarter play, I think both of us would lean on that side where both of us, when we were watching the game, were like, man, I'd, I'd prefer we kick the field goal here, but yeah, they end up sending the, the offense back on. I guess Dude, the team the who, hadn't, is, uh, who yeah. hadn't been trailing. They Michigan yeah, hadn't they trailed had, on the year yet. They, they was like them and Alabama and like Georgia who hadn't trailed all season. So It would have been nice to have that on them, which yeah, we ended that, up getting on them later. But later, Yeah, put them in that situation early, you know. And again, trust your defense and your offense to get back. And then, you know, we At thought the same this was going to be though, a defensive struggle. So maybe take the points because, you, you you know, you think your defense will be able to hold yeah. them to a small amount anyway. Um, we were talking about it before the video. I know you're more on the side of we should have kicked it than I am, where I'm like kind of like a 55-45 yeah. kick it versus go for it, where, you know, maybe you trust your defense instead to... If we don't get it to get a stop at the goal line, then we have good we have good field position heading on to the next drive. But obviously, that's not what happened. So there's all of those things that kind yeah. of like could work around there. Where you could argue on both sides. For me, it's more of a toss up. But 
Um, yeah, I'd love. I'd I would have preferred the there. three points though. Yeah, I, so. I was. I was sad. I was really hoping for the points there. And obviously, it would have came to came into play probably a little, little bit later <laughs> in the game. But yeah, uh, I was. I was scared it was gonna come to haunt us. Yeah, and, and it kind of uh, did. It sadly so. did. It, it was always tough. You never know with the butterfly effect and what could have potentially happened in the game with the three it's points true. on the board. You never know. Um, See, that's what I think. I, I mean, I, it's just a momentum shift where, you know, like you give them a four sure. down stop when instead, you know, you kick the field goal. They feel that they're on their heels now. Yeah. That's just um, receiving wise. I, I feel like, I mean, it was a little weird game where Xavier got a little banged up again in the second half, which is why he was on the field. Um, Omar, I would have liked to see him a little bit more involved than he was. Overall, though, I still really liked some of the play calling and how we're utilizing the receiving core. And we saw some success towards the sidelines in, in the second half with Adrian really heating up in the second half, feeling a little bit more confident and yeah. uh, took a few more Dark. shots where he was he was uh, a little bit slow to like run in the first half, which normally he's quick to run. Yeah, there, there, was, there was a, a third and eight where he would he could have easily he could have probably gotten that first down where he didn't. Um, and he yeah. just didn't feel like, you know, he wanted to stay in the pocket a little too much. There was. Um, I was going to say, there was no. also one in the second half, the the little screen pass to Ramir, where he ended up just basically throwing it away, like, at his feet. And yeah, like a third and two. It was a third and three, I think, and he, like, threw it at his feet. And you're like, kind of a weird, like, play to make on third down when you're Adrian Mar Like, if you're Tom Brady or Phillip Rivers, I get throwing that ball away. If, yeah, you if can't the, run. If the screen's yeah. not there. But you're Adrian on a third and three. I, I feel like you kind of should make a play there. I, I was a little bit confused by that, but... Um, overall, I really like the play calling still in the game over, as like as a whole with the offense. Yeah, we did, and yeah, it, we did fun stuff. That again. triple yeah. option still really fun, working well, and I'm really really enjoying seeing that in the offense. And that, uh, uh, it's been effective. Yeah. yeah, that reverse screen that we used against Oklahoma, yep. fake it one way, throw it back the other. Obviously, that started that ignited our drive on the in the in the first quarter. And we saw some good uh -huh. fourth down execution too, where with uh, yeah. some nice plays there. The one the Omar Manning and like like you said that wheel route to Ramir Johnson. Some nice yeah. balls there where Adrian's able to float up, let the receiver go get it. And that's been a big problem for Adrian in his career where he hasn't been good at putting the ball yeah, in the spot to let the receiver go and get it, you know? And yeah. uh, it was good to see that in, in a play like that on some big time plays. Um, I know uh, Lubick said on that that last drive on a, like the, the fourth down play at the end of the game where uh, there's supposed to be a little bit, basically like a little rub route type like cross with the receivers who were split out wide and it wasn't mm. executed well. And that's why it was really tight coverage there. And um, so that was a receiver problem there. So there's just some, the small things, the small pieces of execution under pressure where the team's just not fully clicking yet. And that's the difference yeah. between being seven and one and <laughs> and three and four right now, basically. It's kind of how it ends up playing yeah. out. So. We'll see what the offense. I think a lot of pros. Ramir Johnson was obviously the highlight where he looked great. Yeah, 170 a, a two yards. Way, a two-way back. Awesome, man. He looked great. Had some really nice runs. Even between the tackles, he was making some nice yeah. cuts and making some runs. And uh, I was really hyped to see Ramir go off. Yeah. Uh, it was unfortunate for Yant. Uh, it was on that second oh, and two. Yeah. We bring him in, and he runs the wrong way, and he only gets a yard when it probably really easily and should have been a you're first down. Here. And then it makes sense to bench him, you know, that that ended up costing us because we didn't convert that third and one. And, yeah. you know, again, where the offense kind of clicked, we, we, we got a first down. You thought we were about to go get our second and start making a drive. And, uh, you know, that's just stuff you can't do. It's the little things, you know. So uh, ho hopefully he gets that playbook, you know, locked down and uh, knows his assignments. Because, he's talented. again, he, yeah, he's talented and clearly a difference maker. It's also part of the thing where he's young, too. So, yeah. you know. He'll, he'll get it figured out there as, as time goes on. For sure, on and too, Ramirez so. more of the veteran guy. You trust him in the big games. You know, it makes sense yeah. that Ramirez playing. Well, I bet we're going to be seeing a lot more of Ramirez this weekend as well. So, um, yep. yeah. Overall, I think a lot of positives with the offense where it's like, I feel like we're taking steps forward where the offensive line isn't as tragic as it was, you know, earlier in the season yeah. against Michigan State or Oklahoma or, you know, those games. Especially but, Oklahoma. Or Illinois. <laughs> yeah, but. Or Illinois. Like, yeah. So those types of situations where it's like, all right, we're seeing the improvement here. But like, man, we just need to get so much farther with the offensive line to really feel like we can put up yeah. a consistent 30 plus points against great teams. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. So defensively, I mean, this is a really interesting game. A lot of really positives where some guys shined bright. Like yes. obviously Cam Taylor Britt played an incredible game and Best had some game of the season. crucial plays. Woo! Yeah. Three pass deflections and, you know, Two of them were were very very nice. Yeah. He also had eleven tackles, so he was all over the field for us. Jeez. Um, again, really really needed that because uh, uh, some of our guys definitely struggled. Deontay Williams probably had his worst game. 
but yeah. also his best moment. So it kind of it kind of evens out. <laughs> it's he ironic. had the pick there. Yeah, he had that pick there at the end. You know, uh, and that's what kind of great players do. You know, you're not yeah. you're not playing your best. Uh, you also you, you make an impact the way you can Agreed. obviously with that pick. So yeah, he, he um, was, that was struggling good anyway. kind of all in all facets like tackling. Yeah, I, I, he had some miss, I some bad if, angles, if some was, bad positioning, some uh some mis yeah. misalignments uh, with coverage, the miscommunications there too. Weird game. Yeah, I for wonder Deontay. if it was. I wonder if it was like the corner like on the you know because there was broken plays. I'd say this was the most broken plays. Uh, Michigan got way more chunk plays than any other team had against us all season. Obviously, the the delayed tight end routes, those yeah. cold routes, those, those murdered us. Those were killing us. Oh my word! I mean, it was that was so frustrating. And you know, you kind of feel like, hey, hey, get, get good used play to design it. But, though. My goodness, yeah, we bit on it, so they kept running it, which was <laughs> smart. Yeah. Um, you know, the wide receivers. There's a couple of broken plays again. Deontay Williams seemed to be at the center of those. Not quite sure what happened. Uh, if it was, you know, cornerback and safety miscommunication but yeah it was not, not a great one and linebackers again didn't feel like they had a mismatch that great of a game either jojo though yeah. Ooh, ooh, mm. looking good i love me some yeah. jojo in this game he, he was looking great and uh some great pursuit even on like some of those big time runs where we saw him chasing down it was it haskins like down the down the yeah, down the sideline there run. and like even though jojo was the backside linebacker playing contain like crash contain on the edge he came across the whole line of scrimmage Chased him across the whole sideline. like 35 and yards. Ended up making the tackle. You're like, that yeah. is the passion. Obviously. And he even did that in the MSU game as well. Like He made some really impressive plays. Love seeing that. It's those heart and um, hustle plays. But yeah, I, I agree players. with you. I think overall, a little bit of a lack, a lackluster game from Reimer, Nelson, Henrich. All three of them seemed like yeah. they were struggling, especially in like the run defense and getting up towards the line of scrimmage and hitting their gaps. And uh, really, like they were lacking at the point of attack in this game and not getting the push you'd like them to see. Yeah, Reimer was Reimer was hit or miss. Obviously, it was good running backs. You yeah, know, there was time. He had twelve tackles, six of them were solo. No, he was good tackling. For yeah, sure. he had one tackle for loss, one pass deflected. There was times he did good at tackling, and then times he kind of missed. And then you kind of wonder again. That's where Josh and I. It's the we don't we don't know the scheme. We don't know his assignment there for sure. Um, but you know, it looked at times You're guessing he was in the type of stuff. You know, yeah. exactly. And Heinrich led the team in fifteen tackles, but only three of them were solo, and he had no tackles for loss. You know, it, it didn't really feel like he was meeting those backs at the line of scrimmage on that inside no. to, to make the stop. He was getting pushed it, around a little bit there in the middle of the field. Yeah. And then like and then he was just missing some of those reads across the middle where it's like, you know, so one of those one of the two, depending on the assignments, has to pick up that leaking linebacker. And it's probably and, either Henrich or Reimer. And so it's like one of those two's got to pick him up and uh, it wasn't happening. So those types of coverage things were, were definitely frustrating, even though Reimer made some really nice plays across the middle of the field, too, at times, though. But. Uh, like, yeah. like you said, it really came down to that point of attack run defense in those. And I felt like our defensive like line threes, had one of their better fours. games. Right. So but it really we does fall on those, those on those linebackers. Yeah. Like Heinrich, Nelson, right? Like uh, all those guys, they have to clean up those tackles a lot better, especially when you feel like Ty Robinson, Ben Stilley, Damian Daniels all oh, played a DeAndre good game. DeAndre Thomas, too. Those guys DeAndre were Thomas, getting to the yeah. ball, too. It was great. And so you felt like they, they were really causing havoc. But, you know, they just it, it, those inside linebackers couldn't finish those job. Hassan Haskins and Corum and Blake Corum, they they get those good, extra man. yards. They're you good. know, they break those defensive tackle arm tackles that slowed them down. And then, you know, I feel like Cam Taylor would have to clean it up. Yeah. Uh, or, those guys you know, have a good chance of playing safeties. on Sunday, though. Those are good running backs. For sure. And uh, and obviously, the, that's why we, Josh and I were worried about that two ended monster is, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just Kenneth Walker who can get tired and you can stop, you know, they're rotating guys in fresh legs. The bruiser, the, the speedy, the, the pace, like it was, it was working and it's a good tandem man. they're going to yeah. have success the rest of the season for sure. And they had good blocking schemes too, the whole time. Yeah. Um, they're what they just execute well up front. And that's what you like to see. I mean, realistically, again, like we saw Deandre Thomas, we saw Damian Daniels making explosive, disruptive plays up front that really yeah. gave us some opportunities in the run game to make some stops. And we had some stops and forced some nice plays. For sure. But in that second half, I think there is a little bit to that narrative of getting a little bit tired. Those guys up front were playing a lot of yeah. snaps. I mean, uh, some of them were playing. Let me, I, can, I can pull up the snap totals here. Um, yeah, I mean, they had, they played some significant snaps. Like Damian Daniels had 51 snaps. Ty Robinson had 55. Dilly, 57. Deontay Thomas, 39 is a lot for Thomas, too. So um, it makes sense that we are starting to see him slow down a little bit. Those big boys up front. Um, that's the most snaps Deont Deontay Thomas played, 39 on the season. Uh, so it, it, that's not too surprising with how many snaps they had to play this game. And it definitely, we did get worn down. So 
I mean, we're we're gonna have to do a uh, you know a better job with that again with Michigan State. You know, it's three and out, three yeah. and out. Uh, so it yeah, was Damian easy Daniels played fifty one. The most he had played was Oklahoma thirty seven. So I mean, yeah. so it, it makes sense that by the end of this game, they're starting to see a little bit more success. You're seeing Haskins and and Coram start ripping off some of those you know twenty yarders that they had in the second half, and uh, ended yeah. up being the difference, especially you know in those final drives uh, and, and their touchdowns. We even caught a few breaks like at the goal line where. Uh, where he, he was tripped. He, he, yeah, he slipped and fell. Oh, my word. That was lucky. I mean, to be that fair, so it kind of got made up for with the absolute crap. Pass it yeah, interference, interference call. That was call. some trash. Five yards out of bounds. Oh, the guy stopped my, running the route. Dude, the dude, didn't even, the dude didn't even try to go after it. Like, yeah, JoJo kind of wrapped up on him, but like, he didn't even try to go after it. Like, yeah, that was. I'm that losing was full out here. Call. I lost full after that. Yeah, that, that one, the whole crowd lost full. Yeah. Everybody was booing. Yeah, so uh, overall, though, I think, again, we're, we continue to get reinforced that our defense is at least very solid. Like, yeah. we're on that fringe top 25. We don't have the explosive playmakers up uh, front. Probably on the front, you know. To get Garrett to the Nelson's quarterback. the closest thing. But he, you know, he's he been inconsistent, hurry. you know. Like, yeah. we don't have the elite pass rusher to put us to that top 15 type defense. We're just not there. But we're a yeah. very competent defense that is very respectable for any any team in the Big Ten. And Thanks. so uh, it gives us the chance, and it really comes down to how our offensive line can execute, and that kind of leads us into this Minnesota game. So the Minnesota Gophers in Minneapolis this weekend, uh, an, an early game, so you know how that can go on the road sometimes. But we opened Ooh. up as favorites on the road, baby. Let's go. Let's go. We opened up at two and a half, but not only that, the line has moved now to four points, and it is a disgusting 48 point over under. So they expect this game to be a bruising Gross. Big Ten low scoring game. And uh, Minnesota's had a weird year, to say the yeah. least. They played Ohio State pretty close at the beginning of the year. You know, that was Stroud's first game. He didn't look great in that game. And so maybe that's some like freshman quarterback yeah. mistake type situation. Muhammad Ibrahim. Ibrahim was be, still healthy and then he got hurt. So yeah, he looked to be the best back in the Big Ten. Sadly, oh, he went man. down. I was like honestly excited to see what he could do this season. Like with how Me too. dang good he looked last year. But um, Kenneth Walker is good. But man, Mo yeah. Ibrahim, he... He, he was something special. Really, I mean, really special. Yeah, he could. He was definitely on that Kenneth Walker level of production. So, yeah, um, they lost by 14 to Ohio State at home. Then they lost to. Then they beat Miami of Ohio by five. Then uh, they beat Colorado on the road, 30 nothing. Again, Colorado's not a good team. They're one and four on the year. They're, they're, and they turn the ball over like yeah, nobody's they made some big time mistakes. They didn't look like a good team in, in that game, but muffed punts. Um, yeah, so sounds like way, a, sounds like a bad special they took, teams. They took advantage of a good team or a bad team, and that looked kind of what we did with Northwestern, um, and beat the crap out of them on the road. So an impressive win. But then, but then, <laughs> but then they head home, and after an impressive thirty and zero win against Colorado, they lose to Bowling Green. Talons mm. up, my alma mater, Bowling <laughs> Green. Let's go, baby. Thirty and a half point underdogs. And Bowling Green beat them 14 to 10 at home. That game was insane. I mean, that, that is was, as crazy as it gets. That was so nice to go back and watch that on film. Oh, it feels good. Mm. It felt great. Just, I know. You're just happy the whole time knowing the ending outcome. So like every I play mentioned, was just a little, more, a little more excited. Like I mentioned after the MSU game, like the only solemn after knowing that we <laughs> lost MSU like that was to beat, that it was that BGSU beat. Minnesota. It felt good, man. I, I can't lie. It felt so good. And then uh, then they went on the road to Purdue. And Purdue's been a, co a competent team this year. Uh, more than we thought they were going to be. And uh, they Minnesota beat them 20-13 on the road. So a very solid it was win a there. Yeah, it was a, a rainy game. A very rainy game. Uh, some uh, Purdue missed a field, you know, missed a field goal. Yeah, they made some mistakes um, for sure. And they definitely had, again, a lot of chances it felt like to win that game. Uh yeah, it was, a, it was a really close game. And uh, David Bell for Purdue definitely looks very scary. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's going to be an interesting one next yeah, week for sure. Definitely. And then they had a bye week. So they're coming off a of bye week heading into our game here, which is that's an X factor for sure. A little bit of preparation time. Um, obviously, we want to look real quick at last year's game. Just real quick. Just because I know, I know, PTSD for Nebraska fans. Uh, but um, we lost last year at in Memorial Stadium, 24 to 17, when Minnesota basically was coming off of like no practice because of COVID. They had a COVID outbreak. They had 30 players missing the game, multiple starters, 
and we lost the game in an ugly, horrible, disgusting game that we played last year. Um, and that's probably the biggest worry with like, if that's possible to happen last year, even if we're favored in this game, we were favored by more last year in that game. Yeah, a lot more. At home. That was the most lost. painful game I've ever watched in Memorial Stadium. <laughs> I mean, I, you were I one walked of the few in, there. Yeah, so you, you walk in and you're like, oh man, like they, they were out with like 38 guys were out because of COVID. Yeah. You look at their sideline, there's like no one. You're like, <laughs> oh, we got this. Mm -hmm. Finally, you know. Apparently, we, that's what the whole team was thinking. Yeah, apparently, because we just showed up so. So, so flat. flat. Yeah. So <laughs> there's all of that, man. And so now when you kind of consider that with, with the weird Minnesota year, what do you think about this team? We'll start on the offensive side of the ball and uh, try to decide for what this Minnesota team is heading into our game. So what do you think about this offense? They're definitely what they have been before. Tanner Morgan's kind of had a down year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is kind of nice. He's 47 of 90. So he's only 52.2% completion. Yeah, he's not the 2019 yeah. Tanner Morgan. He's not the most accurate quarterback in America, Tanner Morgan, for <laughs> no. sure. He's he's four touchdowns to two interceptions. Granted, uh, uh, Ottman Bell had been out uh, yeah, for, for the a first couple two of these games. games. Yep. But but even still, just nothing crazy. Seven hundred yards. Um, he's been sacked eight times. It's you know it's definitely they they do enough. They they do the the huge set. Oh, where for sure. They have tons of linemen. Classic and, uh, fleck. Yeah, I have classic PJ Fleck move. Uh, I forget what they call it. Uh, Something along the lines of super set. You know, they, they bring in yeah. they bring in like eight O linemen. You know, he has then some, have he one has some corny name. Out. Surprisingly enough, PJ Fleck has a corny name. Yeah, for one of his uh, yeah, one of his shocker. Right, moves. but like they they obviously love doing that, and they have a lot of guys who execute that really really well in those short yard situations to try to get those those like third and threes, third and fours, third and twos, and uh, get those yardage. And, and their uh, offensive like, line's just gritty. They, they right. are. Like, but the thing is, but, I was going to say is like, they've been really inconsistent though, especially in pass coverage. Like, yes, it's a weird situation. Like Bowling Green was getting to Tanner Morgan. I think they had like four sacks in the game. And like, Dude, Bowling Green was all out blizzy that whole time. They, they were bringing they a were, lot of pressure. They were sending five or yeah. six and they just didn't care. It was great. Purdue was getting there and they were bringing some dog blitzes too. And like they lit up. I mean, like there was one play we're like in the Bowling Green game where for Tanner, oh, Morgan, Tanner Morgan got you thought was, was hurt. Yeah, he got yeah. smoked by like a corner blitz, um, <laughs> a little wolf blitz. And it, was then, it was a delayed one, yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, Roasted. Purdue was having some success there too. So I, I'm I'm interested to see exactly what the identity of this Minnesota team is outside of wanting to establish the run. But the problem is, is that their lead back, you know, after Ibrahim got hurt, Trey Potts, Trey Potts was looking great. Was looking really, really good. And he went down last week with a really scary injury. Yeah, which, actually, pro probably like prayers for Trey Potts. Yeah, where well, he was in the hospital for like, I think they said six, six days. Six days. He might be career ending. So it's possible. You never want to hear that. Which is crazy uh, because he left. He didn't leave the game in like any sort of like severe looking no, pain. No. Yeah. So it was after the game that the, the, the they saw something it was then he was rushed he rushed to the, the hospital. hospital it's crazy so in, uh, internal bleeding we're not sure what it was um so we hope he's all right man because i mean obviously yeah, football is a game right, yeah, and that, hopefully you know he's got life you know, to live never so. want to never want to see that for, no for, for, no. for anybody but that's scary obviously the question is who's gonna replace him and uh marquise bucky irving was as a true freshman looked really good man i mean he's made yeah. some nice plays this year and he shined against colorado uh, a lot. He had some impressive, like quick step cutbacks, a uh, little like counter kind of like cutbacks to a hole in the line, and and really was reading, reading well, running well. And ironically, with his last name Irving, he looked a lot like Gabe Irvin with some of those plays <laughs> and some of his quick cuts and his speed. I was honestly yeah. very impressed with him. Um, yeah, he's got he's got twenty five carries. 112 yards. He's averaging four and a half yards per carry. Yeah. Uh, as long this year is 28 yards. He's respectable. Again, small, small sample size, but he looks to be very serviceable. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, crazy. Uh, also, talking about the run game, they also put in this quarterback, Kramer. This is uh, number 12, who has 10 attempts for 54 yards. And he has a rushing touchdown and as he, well. And he's come in and ran a little bit. So they have a wildcat quarterback. That's just something to look at. Uh, Michigan did it last week with Marty, where they had a we had yeah, that was weird. put in, and they had some success with it too. So um, that's something that our defense will have to be very aware of: is 
you know, uh, if Tanner Morgan comes out and some other QB comes in, just know it's going to be a run. Definitely. And uh, yeah, we'll yeah, see, man. He hasn't thrown yet. So. It, it, their offense is just it's just all it's right. okay. It's solid. It's, it's okay. okay. But like they're definitely if they're not they, they they made some nice plays and Tanner Morgan still has moments where he zips that ball out towards the sideline. It's impressive. They use Chris Hotman Bell. They use these guys to make some impressive plays. And then suddenly they're moving the ball. And so it's like, that's in there. And you got to respect that that part of their game. But their identity is running the ball. And they want to get to the ground and uh, yeah. use this that is zone a, blocking to get to the yeah. edge. This is not definitely not the Tyler Johnson. Uh, no. You know, where, you know, and Mo Ibrahim, where they just have. And then also a, a good senior offensive line where everybody's really high graded. Yeah. Um, it's not that. But again, they didn't need it last year on us either. That's the thing, dude. That's the thing. No, that, and and Rashad Bateman opted out last year, you know, like, and we exactly. still lost. So it, it, that's why you got to respect it's that. Scary. So we'll see. Heading into their defense, they have a really interesting defense. They have a, it, it's very like Michigan State ask, where there's no like absolute standout player. And if anything, their standout player was their, was probably their safety. Uh, Tyler Newbin made some really, really nice mm-hmm. plays for him, similar to uh, Michigan see, State. And Dealed the game against Purdue last week with yep. a pick at the end of the game. And he looked really, really good. And so, like, he's a guy you got to respect. And they have a respectable pass rush, similar to Michigan State. So, like, in, in those kind of veins, like, where they're a defense that's beatable, but they do a lot of good things well. And uh, they have enough where they can get to the quarterback and then start forcing mistakes. Yeah. Uh, Boy Maif, uh is good at getting Boye the Boye Mafi. Oh, Mafe. Sorry, Mafe. Boye yes, Mafe, I think right. is how they said it. Boye Mafe. Yeah, yes. duh, I, I, I listened to that. But, um, <laughs> you know, sometimes when the teleprompter is ahead of you, of you course, know, you, of just, course. you just butcher it. Yeah, you pull a Ron Burger, you just read what it <laughs> yeah. says. <laughs> yeah. He reads exactly what's on the teleprompter. Yes, of course. Uh, no, yeah. So, you know, he was impressive. He got the quarterback a handful of times. And in the middle of the field, they got a linebacker, Jack Bibbins, who made some really, really nice plays around the ball. Um, in coverage, really, in all facets of the game, he's a really well-rounded player and was really impressive. I had I, I had a few notes where he's pretty lengthy, surprisingly lengthy. Uh, he swatted a few balls down, got to got to the edge, made some plays, and uh, I'm really impressed with him as a player. And uh, he was one guy I really wanted to highlight. And they have a few other guys I think were really impressive uh, with some tough names to say. Asezi Odamewu, really impressive mm. play, and uh, he did he made some nice a point of attack plays towards the line of scrimmage. Uh, I was impressed with Thomas Rush as well on the edge and again, getting to the quarterback a little bit and open field tackling. He was really impressive there. So there's a handful of guys there where I'm like, all right, I I can see the potential for this defense. They hit hard. They get to the quarterback and uh, there's yeah. potential for them to make, to force some turnovers in a game where uh, we're on the road or you know how that goes with Adrian <laughs> Martinez. And we're on the road. Own. It's early. Yeah, uh, so you know, that's where Bro- I get a little bit worried. Frost sure. is one and two against Minnesota. Right. But the big butt though, <laughs> and oh, we love the those big here. butt, though. The secondary the is where you can take advantage butt, of this though. team, though. Um, we saw Bowling <laughs> Green. There were some broken plays. Where, like, there were some mm. opportunities for them to have some big-time plays, but they missed a few. It, the, the ball just didn't connect. Um, they, they were Titans under pressure. Were wide open. Yeah, there the were some Bowling plays there where they had some chances. Purdue even had some, like, yeah. plays across the middle of the field where David Bell was making plays. They had some guys really getting the ball and had some big-time plays in the air. And um, the one thing we've seen is that, I mean, Minnesota's done a great job around the line of scrimmage. Shocker, P.J. Fleck defense, making plays to the line, not allowing big-time running plays. And uh, they've only allowed 77 rushing yards per game so far. So they've been very, very impressive, even against, you know, some debatably weaker opponents uh, throughout yeah. this early part of the year. But uh, overall, teams have had to try to throw the ball. They haven't been able to establish the run. And uh, teams have had success across the middle of the fields and getting that ball to the outside. So those are things we got to look for heading into our X Factors predictions and everything else. So, Caleb, let's talk about some of the X Factors and the keys to the game before we get into the predictions. Where do you want to start with this team? How does Nebraska attack? What are we looking for with the potential X Factors here? Yeah, you know, you think first to the defensive side, you know, P.J. Fleck is definitely uh, a run-first offense. Yep. uh, Especially this year. So, again, it's it's going to be containing Bucky. uh, Yes, sir. Making sure that um, he doesn't make plays. Again, with only, uh, you know, one running back, uh, it, it feels a lot more doable, more of the Kenneth Walker, Michigan State situation. Um, their offensive line, uh, while is solid and their scheming will be good. So I think this will this will be a really good week in film. Just, you know, explaining, you know, what what kind of schemes are they trying to run? How do we fill those gaps? Uh, how do we how do we make stops and plays? I think is, yeah. is going to be crucial 
on our, our linebackers, you know, really, really hitting their assignments and uh, stopping them again when, when, when they do run big personnels too. <laughs> stacking those There's boxes. only one way to stop Bucky is the Winter yeah. Soldier book. You gotta, <laughs> you, gotta, <laughs> you gotta say the words in order. October and stop. <laughs> Red 14. <laughs> yeah. For all of you Marvel fans out there. But uh, no, yeah, I agree with you, man. They just they just like to, uh, that's what they want to do. And it's going to come down to how we how we attack them up front. And our front seven is going to have their hands yeah. full again. Working with those zone blockings. And we saw how they destroyed us two years ago. They took us by surprise with a linebacking core that we thought was at least decent up front with our front got seven. Smoked. And we got smoked in, in Minnesota. So we're going to have to come out to play. And that's going to take a, a, an all-in effort from Damian Daniels and DeAndre Thomas up front to create that space and really move the the guards and Dilly, the centers and in the gaps and the one and two gaps to make some plays and, and open it up for our linebacking core. And again, our linebacking core was so hesitant against in this last game against Michigan where it felt like we were like playing almost for the blocks. Like there was moments where like we like engaged with the blocks, like try to shed them, but we just weren't able to shed them where I'd prefer us to hit those gaps hard and then try to create space with our impact and then move to get to the tackles. And that's been, I feel like a weird, like maybe philosophy, defensive philosophy situation. I don't know. Cause it's, we do that a lot, but um, I feel like we yeah. don't hit the point of attack very well on shedding those blocks on the run, on the run game. But I agree with you there. That's a huge X factor with our strength versus their strength. And uh, how how they run versus how we run stop. And you can almost say that the same thing on the opposite side of the ball. How we yeah. run versus how they run stop. And we both of, both of our teams want to establish the run. And it very well could come down to who does that better um, in this game. And can force their yeah. will their will on the other team up front. I would definitely not. Uh, you know, if I'm going to get put put bets on, I'd probably put my bet on you know Minnesota. To Minnesota. Yeah. Offensive line to do a better job of executing that than ours. But... You know, again, we've been decent in the run game. So, yeah. And, and like you said, with pass rush to, uh, you know, Minnesota has been good at that. They have been good at yeah. pass rush. Our offensive line has been oh notoriously boy. bad. <laughs> as Josh and I mention every week. Ben Hart and Corcoran, uh, baby. Uh, making fun of our offensive line for being abysmal. Uh, and they're back. <sighs> the boys so, are back. And we got our tackles back in business. Turner yeah, we got, and Ben woo. Hart left and right. And well, right and left. And uh, see what they can do. I mean, I'm a little bit worried about those matchups there. I, I, you know, I, I expect Minnesota to have a handful of chances to get to Adrian. But again, Adrian did a good job of minimizing that and getting the ball out. And what we'd like to yeah. see, I think both of us would like oh, to yes. see. More rollouts. Is Adrian rolling out to his right, where he's been able to throw pretty well when rolling to his right. When he rolls Very to his solid. left, there's some problems. But when he rolls to his right, he's been looking good. He can make plays. He feels comfortable over there. He's good at getting the ball downfield and out of his hands. And so hopefully more we can play action, do that a rollouts. little bit better and do that better. And Adrian's throwing the ball so well off play action. And we saw how Michigan bit on that play action. It was a big time touchdown for us in that game. So mm -hmm. um, those are, I think, a lot of X factors, how we can utilize that effectively. And hopefully we can do that to minimize Minnesota's pass rush in this game and minimize our weak uh, tackles overall. So we'll see what happens there for sure. You know, it's just when they do attack with those wide receivers, us being ready, uh, you know, there was a lot of broken plays uh, against yeah. Michigan more than we had seen. It had been, you know, a more sloppy performance. So, uh, you Jim know, Taylor, again, against, yeah, against Ottman Bell, um, you know, against guys uh, like uh, Wright and Jackson. Uh, yeah, Cam Taylor's going to have his hands full this game. Yeah, this is a more, um, you know... Michigan, I didn't feel had as strong of a wide receiver core as as Minnesota does. Definitely not. Um, they're not nearly as good as Michigan State's, but somewhere in between. So uh, we're, we're going to have to but play I mean, a like, really good, solid defense. Dylan Wright, Daniel Jackson, both of them have looked very, very solid. And what they do well that we wish we could do even better was our re their receiving core really gets out there and they lay the wood. They block and they, they get up field. And yes. so um, that's something to watch out for and really pay attention to how our, our secondary is able to strip those blocks and get towards the ball because uh, that was a problem for us at points in the second half against uh, Michigan. So we'll see what yeah. happens there. I agree with you. And really pay attention to how Cam Taylor works with that ISO on the outside. And if we can, again, allow... If he can play as absolutely monstrous uh, as he did last yeah, game. Yeah, our best what, formula. Just, oh, what a great Cam Taylor brick game. So excited <laughs> to see again. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's making plays around the line of scrimmage. We even saw that against so the MSU hype. game, starting to hit, hit more around the line of scrimmage, or Northwestern around the line of scrimmage and make them plays. So I think mm. Cam Taylor's starting to get comfortable again and really get into it this year. And hopefully we can see that NFL-level production yeah, from turn, him. Yeah, we're, we're, we saw the player last week that we were hoping to see yes. all year from him. An NFL-caliber corner. Super hype.
Exactly. So uh, our best recipe for success this year has been allowing him on the outside and letting and letting our safeties get close to the line of scrimmage and make plays. And so hopefully we can we can yes. stick towards that again. So I agree with you. Um, overall, I think the biggest X factor would probably come down to how our team. It's just mm. the, it's the road advantage. It really, really is. And then talk well, guess, to me. Well, first of all, I want to say first, like I said, mentioned earlier, I just want to emphasize our receiving core taking taking advantage of their secondary where their secondary is their weak points. Mm. Their corner, their corners aren't good. And so we expose him. Expose him. We have a chance to make some plays here. So Omar Manning, I'm hoping to see some plays. Torre, I'm hoping to see some plays. And uh, Xavier, yeah. we need to see, see Xavier get the ball. So that's a big time thing for sure. So on the road, Let though, this cook. is where this is where we gotta this is where we gotta talk. I mean, the, the biggest problem and the biggest X factor in this game is that we're on the road against a respectable coach in a Big Ten game. And off a of bye week. Off a of bye week. And Frost in his career on the road is four and fourteen with his Don't only wins that. coming up against Maryland, Illinois, Rutgers, and Purdue. I I don't know about you, but those aren't powerhouses. Those aren't teams that have been good over over their course of their careers. And and those were in seasons where those teams weren't good. And so, you know, the I think the question is, A, is Minnesota good? Because can we throw them in that, that you know, that little circle of four players or four teams there, four and 14 of the four wins? I guess it's kind of question A. And uh, this year so far, we're 0-3. Of course, we lost to Illinois on the road. And usually on the road is where turnovers start to bite us and uh, cause some problems. And even against MSU and Oklahoma, where, it, you know, they weren't obviously destroying us, mistakes hurt us in those games whether it was turnover specifically and i mean even at the end of the game you know obviously adrian threw that pick to basically end the game in the msu game but mistakes from the rest of our team special teams and, yeah. and across the board penalties from the offensive line were generally what was hurting us and this is going to be a uh, rude awakening for our team in comparison we've had two night home games which might just be double digit points in favor at, <laughs> yeah, at, well, yeah with the atmosphere i mean I think Michigan had like three, four false starts. A lot of you know, them. Uh, Northwestern had multiple false starts. Couldn't get the call. Had to use timeouts. Uh, delay of game penalties. Again, huge, huge stuff. The crowd is such a factor, especially at night uh, in, in Lincoln, sure. in Memorial Stadium. It's a big difference. And then you and go from that to on the to road. To an 11 a.m. Minnesota game. Yeah. Where there is just, it's just dead. I mean, nobody shows up to Minnesota games. <laughs> It's Minnesota. I Nobody see cares. I saw an article where it was like one of the pros. It was after like their first three games. I think it was like one of the pros was like fans are showing out. And it was like we had like 50,000 fans at the like wow. the Miami, Ohio game. Wow. wow. The student section almost filled up. <laughs> it's like there's people that go here. <laughs> We're pissing off Minnesota fans. <laughs> yes. Are the two Minnesota fans will be in the comments saying oh, no. we are diehard in the 1940s. Oh, no. We won natties. Mm hmm. That's Even true. though, you know, most programs didn't really feel much football Again, teams. We have, we have to take our shots where we can because we've lost them. I mean, like, my goodness, let us have our fun. Seriously. Yeah, we're one and two against Minnesota, the Scott Frost era. It's not going great. Yeah. So, uh, again, that's the thing here. I mean, obviously, it's a huge But at least nobody cares. Road. So, you know, it's not like any, any Minnesota fans are capitalizing and yeah. super hype because their team's actually good. <laughs> nobody cares. And like you were saying, is like, like the, the point, if you were talking like Vegas odds point swing of like a night game in Lincoln versus an 11 a.m. game on the road, with especially Huge with how Adrian mess. Martinez plays, with how this team has played under Frost on the road so far. I mean, that's at least, like a normal swing home away is three and a half. We're like, you know, this could be Ten. five. <laughs> Ten's a little excessive. It could be five, six maybe with betting odds in my head, where like you're like, I don't know, man. That, that really sways things. So with that said, here we are with the predictions, Caleb. Oh. I mean, like I said, it's a four-point spread right wait, now. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, point I, I over wanna, under. Before, oh. I, I want to talk about their tough losses on the road. Oh, yeah. Just like, because uh, right now, Husker fans are kind of excited. You know? Yeah. Games we, where we, we're... We, they've all been close. We, we think we, we can win. We, we, we were close to Oklahoma. We okay. were close to Michigan State. Right. We were close to Michigan. We beat Buffalo. We stopped Northwestern at home. Yeah, we've, we've strung it's together like, some respectable performances. But not so fast. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Illinois. Remember Illinois? That was an away game. We lost twenty-two to thirty. Scott Frost is two and two against Illinois. He's one and two against Minnesota. We lost last year when we shouldn't have. So let's go back. Twenty eighteen. Northwestern on the road. The overtime loss choke. That a game we, we should have easily won. 
we had nine we were favored by like 99 point you know whatever well i think it, we literally had like a 99 it was 97 point percent so to win that game and we choked it away 2019 there was Colorado a handful of games there at Colorado overtime yeah. loss close game Same close score. game again a pretty even matchup again not a great team but we lost and then Minnesota on the road a game where we win. thought we easily could have won but of course they were end up being way better than we thought because yeah. we were kind of the first so game that showed them that seven so that one will kind of but we got smoked but yeah but then Purdue Purdue that was not so a good bad Purdue team 31 27 loss then 2020. Northwestern again. So winnable. 13 L. Iowa choke again. So like, winnable. And then this year again, Illinois. We lost yeah. on the road. Caleb, it was the game one. It was game one. <laughs> you know, it was a week zero game. Everybody was excited for Brett Bielema. It was their Super Bowl. You know, it's still, we still lost. We still choked. And all those games, what do we do? We turned the ball over late. We had our chances to win and we didn't. And a lot of mistakes, yeah. A lot of mistakes. Now, Frost does get a couple wins against bad teams on the road each year. You know, he's two yeah, and three. The Maryland, in Illinois, like Rutgers, and Purdue games. Yeah. Yeah. Like, granted, though, Rutgers, we almost choked last year. Really, really close game. True. Maryland was a one-touchdown score game. We have not... Have we blown out... We haven't blown out anybody Wait, no, no. On Maryland the road. was a big win. Oh, Maryland was. Okay, fine. We won Maryland big. Purdue was a super sloppy game where Purdue... Just decided not to We had play four last turnovers. Year. Wasn't it four turnovers against Rutgers last year? Yeah. And we were losing for like three quarters. We ended up winning, so, yeah, by seven. Yeah, we beat I think two years ago we blew win. out Maryland. Yeah, yeah so we okay. beat Maryland fifty four to seven. Heck yeah. We blew out Maryland. So it can happen. Now again, this is a you know, an even team. And my question my question really is yeah. is you know, after that Northwestern game again, everybody knew our team was better than this. The fans were there, and everybody was determined. Everybody in the stadium, the whole team. I'm sure it was a great week of practice, as Coach Ross always says it is. Oh, it's a great week of practice. It's always a great week of For practice. Sure. He has so, been a little more vibrant this week, though, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, I know. He has, he has been more alive. So hopefully hopefully we can win this one. There's a little bit of personality from Frost this week. So We okay. should win this one. Everything on paper says Give us we your should win this here, game. Caleb. Where are you at? We're going to lose. <laughs> oh, dude, you're killing me. I think we should oh, win. I, like, man. I think we should win. Right. I want to eat a W. The last five we, weeks say we should win. We Yeah, we should have won. But we say that all the time. And the truth of the matter is, in football, only two things matter, and that's the W or the L in your column. It doesn't matter how you get there, what happens, the penalties, everything else. It's just a W or an L, and that's it. That's all it is. All the things. And at the end of the day, Frost is 4 and 14 on the road. And this is PJ Fleck, who has outcoached Scott Frost in the last two seasons. And this is a huge game on the for road. Minnesota. It's a huge game for Minnesota, and it's a huge game for Scott Frost. Oh, I mean, this is a massive game. If we don't win this game, we're not going bowling. I mean, the we odds have, of like, it would be puny. Yeah. Like, we might not go bowling if we win the next two weeks. Right. Obviously, it's a tough schedule. But the same, you know, at the same light, you know, got to take care of business against Illinois. It's just inexcusable. And. It's another yeah. one. And again, again, we're favored right now. So we, this is the game we need it's to not, win. It's not going to be a blowout. It, we could win this one close. I hope we do. I obviously hope we do. Yeah. Minnesota sucks. Yep. No, there's no fans. I'd love to stomp them. PJ Fleck, you know, I'd love to row the boat <laughs> all over PJ Fleck. <laughs> yeah. Please do it. But I think we're going to lose. I'll go. Uh, this is going to be a low scoring bloodbath, right? Yeah. It's like, tw you know, 24 18. It's just ugly. oh oh oh. We're going under 20. Oh, it's gonna be disgusting, Yikes, dude. That's tough. Okay, well that's depressing. I I think we're gonna win this game. I think. I hope so. But I don't. Please win I this don't game. really see this as a turning Please. point because I think Minnesota's just not very good. Like they're just not a good team. They're not. They're not good. We should. We, this shouldn't be a game. This is why I'm, I think I throw this game into the Purdue Maryland. The Rutgers and category. I think that could totally be the case. Like this is a winnable game where we'll end up being now five and fourteen on the road in in games with wins against uninspiring teams. Where like you know, luckily for Minnesota, Please. they have and uh, we need it. Luckily for Minnesota, they have a stretch of playing us, Maryland, which Maryland's at least decent. But like then Northwestern Illinois, so like they have a stretch here where they can win some games. But um, yeah, overall, like that's the thing. I'm, I think we're gonna have success in the passing game. 
relative. I, the, we the, should. The question is, I think. I mean, if do we, we fumble the ball? Like, how, how does Adrian minimize we pressure? Can Allen. Right. Yeah. And overall, I think we can use Ramirez in these slip screen and passing game and get him in some open space and and hopefully find success there where we actually executed that really really well against Michigan. And so Very those nice. things get me excited. Uh, a lot about this team and then we saw Jojo make some unbelievable plays and pass coverage mm. on the year even in the even on the play that didn't matter he found the pick on on the offsides yeah. play where he they, uh, they just threw it up there for a potential play but uh, he made a great play and coverage there he's been all over the field and I think Cam Taylor's finding his own overall I think we're able to minimize damage enough to to squeak yeah. this game out on the road we probably are going to make the mistakes but I expect Tanner Moore gonna make we some mistakes. Did we, I mean, watching him against Bowling Green, holy moly, that was horrible. <laughs> and Again, Bowling Green was great. bodying that offensive line. So if we have any, if we have any semblance of a decent team, we should win this game. Where I talent wise says we should. I think we're better than Purdue. Purdue had every chance to win that game, uh, and like I really think that this team's yeah. gonna be close. I'm gonna go 28, 20, 28, 27. One point win on the road in Minneapolis. We're gonna, I guess that puts us on the uh on the over pretty significantly, actually, on the over for a 48 point over under. So I'll take the over on the points, but the under, but and I'll take uh but I I would bet on Minnesota in a spread situation currently if it's sitting at uh four. So I don't know, it's gonna be a close one, boys. I'm scared. Very yeah, I any man, road game against should, a competent coach win. is scary, but especially I really with the trust bye the week. team. Yep, 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 yep. For sure. So that's where it gets scary. We should win. <laughs> I want to win so bad. But we'll see. Everybody, I want to win so bad. Oh, I know. We'll so see. We've bad. been ranting already for a long time. I mean, the predictions were a little bit shorter, but we had a lot of X factors. We had a lot of breakdown. We had a lot of things there. So I hope you guys enjoyed mm. this video. Drop all your comments down below, Husker Nation, your thoughts on this game. Who do you side with? Is my narrative a little bit more reasonable? Is Kale's narrative a little bit more reasonable? Or do you think we're blowing them out? Because I've seen a lot of that on Twitter as well. I mean, I, I'm, not, not, oh. I'm not in the blow it out camp. Are we going to score, you know, more than 30 points like the rest of the season? I like think we've we only can. Done it once. I think we can. Okay. If things work out for us, we can for sure. I mean, this team has the the big the big game explosive upside. We saw it with Northwestern. Like, we could do it against Purdue. I think we, we could. We can always get yards. My question is points. For sure. No, I agree with that. So, we'll see. Um again, drop all down below, like, comment, subscribe. Sure that you guys really enjoyed hmm. it. This is going to be a fun one. Hopefully, we can celebrate you guys, celebrate with you guys with a big time win. Otherwise, there's a lot on the line here for Frost and uh, his future if we end up losing this game. So we'll see what happens. Again, we appreciate you guys for watching. But as always, guys, I'm Josh. That's Caleb. This is Bexy Sports. And guys, we will see you next time. Go Big Red. Go Big Red, baby.